What's up everybody, Pumpkin here. So CDPR just pushed out a hotfix. Uh, it came out April 4th, which is going to be today or yesterday, depending on when you're watching this video. And yeah, it's a very small update. They fixed a couple bugs and they nerfed two cards, which we'll get into in a bit. Uh, so yeah, it's gonna be a very short video, but I'm just gonna basically go over all the changes. So fix a bug where summoning circle could play zero cost token units. Um, the main deck where this saw play was a Eldane deck. Um, typically, you would play Summoning Circle uh, in round three. You would Call of the Forest, one of your dead eye. Uh, this you would get from your leader ability Eldane when you transform a trap. Um, you would put it into your deck. You would play like Isengrim from your deck with Call of the Forest. Uh, then you'd play Summoning Circle and pull that dead eye back out um, of your deck, and it would give Isengrim a free proc. It was really good. Uh, this was a strong effect. So typically in like a 10 card round um, with summoning circle, you have up to 10 like picks on it, uh, but usually some of those go to waste. So if you pull out, let's say two, four provision cards, you got two ticks left over that aren't doing anything well, you could pull a dead eye out of your deck if you had call of the forest. So th this was essentially a free three to four points, um, which actually ended up mattering sometimes. Um, the other scenarios you could, um, you could decoy Arnoff into your deck and then pull it back out, which wasn't very good, but you could in theory do it. Uh, you could also play Shu, purify him and decoy him into your deck or sire him back into your deck and then summoning circle it back out. That sounds okay, except you have to reuse the same Shu ability. You don't get to reach Shu's. Um, so you have to play Shu Hunter and you have to roll the nine damage. Basically, it was really gimmicky. Uh, the Eldane very, the Eldane, um, what's it called? The the Eldane bug, or what, I guess they're calling it a bug, um, was the only deck that actually utilized this well. So it's kind of unfortunate, but it's understandable why they made this change. So it's kind of unfortunate, but eh, it's okay. Uh, fix a bug where Hubert ability could trigger by damage dealt to allied units. Um, okay, so Hubert, the wording is something along the lines of uh, boost itself by the amount of damage you deal to your opponent's units. Um, there was a bug where it would count the damage you do to your side of the board. The idea would be you would play Yen negative on your side of the board. It would hit the whole board, uh, so both sides. And then you would play Queen Calanthe on Hubert. You played on the board and it would get boosted by a ton. Uh, it would boost by all the damage that your opponent, that you did to your opponent. And it would also boost by all the damage you did on your side of the board too, um, which was a decent amount sometimes. Um, so this got nerfed, which I'm not actually very happy about so if this was a problem with like a normal hubert deck with like an ana deck um i i'd be okay with it right so like an analyst uh sorry not anna ada ada you wait till the end of the game uh you hold on to your hubert you have like an octopus on the board you're gonna pull out like sabrina with summoning circle uh basically you're gonna blow out like 20 30 points in one turn and then you finish the game with hubert and you win the game um, your opponent doesn't have tall removal because, well, it's not their turn anymore and you had last say, so you win the game. But with the Queen Calanthe deck, because of the way her ability works, you have to draw a card at the end. Um, when you do that whole combo with Yen into Hubert, your opponent had a turn to interact with this. So if your opponent had Leo, Geralt, Peter, or then any kind of reset or high removal, they just killed Hubert and you lost every time. So... Sure, it was a bug based on the wording, but the only scenario where it really mattered was in like a tier three deck that wasn't very good. Yeah. Ah, I'm a little disappointed because that deck is unplayable now, but oh well, I, I, I guess it is a bug fix because technically based on the wording, it was a bug. So a little disappointed about that one, but that's, that's all right. Fix a bug where Oswald and Brewers would display consume VFX when they consume nothing. Sure. Visual change. Uh, fix a bug whereby triggering a locked Deathwish unit's ability via another card, such as Maylarn, would unlock the Deathwish unit. There's a bug where, like, you'd have a lock Harpy Egg and you'd play a Maylarn and it would unlock the Harpy Egg because... I don't know. CDPR coding. Or, I, I don't know. So that's obviously a good fix. Fix a bug where same one would not deal damage if there are no units adjacent to the target. Uh, I actually encountered this bug. I would, I damaged a crone for three, but it didn't damage for three. It did nothing. It just did nothing. I used the ability, there's an animation, and then nothing happened. So, 
Yeah, I don't know. It's obviously a good chain. Fix a bug where uh, Cyana's order ability could be used on a turn other than the one that's actually... So apparently there's this bug where you could play Sienna on the board, you would full test it, click on her, use the ability, and then the next turn you would Vernon Roche, uh, and it would go off, and you would play four units. Yeah. I don't actually know how somebody found this bug, because that's not how you play the card typically. Um... Yeah, I'd be very curious to <laughs> how that person uh, came up with this bug. But uh, yeah, obviously it's a bug. It's a good fix. Um, may maybe maybe the card should be the next order you play. Maybe not necessarily that turn. Maybe that would make uh, her viable. Yeah. Uh, Neckart cooldown would not refresh if the unit's target has a shield. Fifth bug where Vizzy Guard would not take all boosted allies into account. These are just good changes, like bug fixes. Fallblood Cultist and Hawker Healer could target undamaged units. Okay, here we go. Here's the meat of the hotfix. Higher Vampire, Limit of Death Wishes changed from 3 to 2. So, this is the card that's similar to Ruhin. If you eat the card, it respawns itself. Uh, you could do that up to 3 times. Uh, so, he was worth up to 20 value if you consumed him 3 times for 10 provisions. So, he was a 20 for 10. Uh, the counterplay would be a lock or a uh, banish effect, like bomb or... Regis Bloodlust. So they nerfed it. It's a little too strong. 20 for 10 is, yeah, even even conditional 20 for 10, but it's not that hard to pull off if you have like K-Ran or you play Barbagazzi on the board or you play Cyclopses, right? So I, I'm not too surprised. I would have maybe liked to see the provision go from 10 to 9. I don't think this card's going to see... I, I think it's still playable in like an AQ deck because that deck likes playing cards like Barbagazzi. So at least I still run Barbagazzi, sure. I, I think it's still playable. But I don't think you just throw this and Karen into a monster deck and just win the game with it or whatever. So yeah, it, it'll still see some play from time to time, but it, it's nowhere near as powerful as it used to be. It, it lost 25% of its power. All right. And the other Detlaf, this is Detlaf the leader, the amount uh, of damage went down from two to one. So before Detlaf did two damage, and if you killed a unit, you spawned a two. Now it does one damage if you kill a unit, spawn a two. Uh, he, he did get a provision buff from 14 to 15, which is obviously nice, but uh, losing a damage on each tick is huge. Uh, killing units is much harder. Setting up um, Gorgon is going to be much harder because typically you would ping a three down to one and then you would play your Gorgon. You can't do that anymore. You could double ping, but that feels horrific. Um, yeah, it feels really bad. It's a big nerf. Um, if your opponent plays a six-point engine, Detlaf can't kill it. Detlaf is not killing a six-point engine. Typically, it would play like Regis, ping it for four, uh, and then it would follow it up with Detlaf. Using two Detlaf takes feels horrific uh, to kill something. Um, you can still kill it with Crone, but that's really the exception. And, of course, there's a Cyclops if they have a body large enough to kill it. Um, the other nice thing is cards like Aquavis kind of were unplayable because you would you would bleed out a bunch of engines in round like one, two, or three. You'd get to round three, they would still have their Detlaf charges. You'd play uh, your Aquavis, and then they would just one, two, three, one shot Aquavis. And it was just like, yeah. Aquavis was pretty shitty because it's just, it, it wouldn't live. They would just hold on to their Detlaf chargers and Aquavis died. So that was kind of unfortunate. So obviously it's a good change. Um, today I played on ladder. I think I've saw like, Two debt laughs, I want to say. Um, I played a lot of Dana Scoyatel, and Dana Scoyatel is really, really good. Um, like, really, really good. In comparison to, like, Northern Realms, it's just it's better than Northern Realms by, like, miles. Very simply because in a Dana deck, you can play three engines in one turn. That's pretty good. Um, not to mention your leader is a free tutor on any engine that you need, which is really, really good. Uh, Dana's, Dana's in a good spot. The only reason Dana was not good is because of Detlaf. Detlaf being nerfed pretty hard. Uh, D Dana's good. Uh, you, you queue into big monsters, and yeah, they have a lot of points, but your engines get a lot of value. The movement package with Matron and Sentinels is six points a turn up to. Um, you, you, you can get some crazy scores, like, 90, like 80, 90 point boards in like a 10 card round three. So yeah. Dana Squatel, very, very strong. <clears throat> but yeah. Um, leader notification, reach rank 25 to display. The rest of these are basic uh, like UI issues or like quality of life fixes. 
Uh, deck graveyard preview screens would appear okay. And yeah, there's a bug where, like I said, you had to win like X games with each leader. I don't remember the exact number, but it was either like, I think it was like five or 10, but it's actually a hundred, which is a slight difference. Um, so yeah, uh, very, very, very small hot fix. The play rate of that laugh was stupidly high, like stupidly high to the point where I think my record was like 10 debt laughs in a row. That's not a good sign. I don't really feel, I mean, I made a deck that beat debt laugh every time, right? But if you're a new player or you're like a semi new player or like even a veteran and, and you're not playing that very specific deck that counters debt laugh and you queue into debt laugh 10 times, you're going to have a bad time because he's really, really good. Uh, not to mention, if you even want to consider playing Northern Realms, you just have to... You can't play Northern Realms uh, in, the, in the Dat Laugh meta. So uh, you're, you're going to start seeing a little bit more Northern Realms on ladder. You're going to see a lot more Dana. Dana is very strong now. Um, Nilfgaard is still really good. I, I, I know Nilfgaard was kinda, didn't really get anything this expansion, except they got everything they needed. Uh, Vivian's really, really good. And the... I'm gonna the piggy dude, the guy that spawns a bronze. That card is really good, like insanely good. Why? Because there's this really cute card called Dopplers. Dopplers allow you to play a nine to ten point bronze for six p, and you can create another one of those, which is crazy. Uh, yeah, that card is really really good. Dopplers. If you're playing Nilfgaard and you're losing or you're having issues winning, get rid of the Letho Ox Serret package, at least for now. Um, if a lot of engines start coming back, then you can put those back in. But in the meantime, just play an all-human Nilfgaard deck and throw in Dopplers and win the game. You just, you just win. It's it's way too many points. Dopplers at 9 to 10 points on turn 1 is stupid amounts of points. Um, yeah, like to the point where if I lose coin flip against Nilfgaard and their opening hand has two Dopplers, there is a 0% chance I'm getting out of round 1 uh a card off i will always be losing on even so uh yeah doppler human nerf card is very strong and you can play any leader you can play anna you can play morvin you can play usurper you can play any of the leader they all work so uh yeah short video i'm super excited for the meta uh you could start playing engines now um yeah I, I rambled a little at the end but that's okay i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll see you guys on the next one